Wow, what a Singapore Grand Prix and what a result, James. Uh, one that I'm sure the team didn't expect going into the race. No, absolutely not. I mean, as you know, we make an extraordinary number of plans. We do something like two million simulations before we go into the race. None of them had that in at all, I can promise you that. Originally, we, we had rain around 4 p.m. It rained quite heavily, actually, 4 till 5. And we assumed at that point in time that was it for the rain. There wasn't anything else on the radar. Track would be dry, but a little bit difficult to start. So we wrote a plan up around that, had a number of good tactical strategies that allowed us to manoeuvre around what was going to be a very difficult race for us. Then we come to around 7 p.m., rain falls again, and it was quite evident, in fact, that we were going to have a wet start. All your plans you've drawn up to that point in time, tear them up, start again. And the first big decision became, really, when you stood on the grid, do you fit intermediate or ex-wet tyres? Uh, clearly no one was going to go slick. It was very, very wet at that point in time. But that wasn't a straightforward decision. In fact, so much so you can clearly see that half the grid went inter, half the grid went ex-wet. Um, for us, what was clear is there's no more rain on the radar. This isn't like Monaco where you can really take an ex-wet like we did before into a dry condition. And the inter worked or should work quite well there. So we went inter, but as you saw, really mixed up and down the grid. But any other dry plans we had torn up. And as we went through the start of the race and two Ferraris and Verstappen all got caught up with each other, again, we had to sort of rethink back through our procedure, what we're going to do, who we're fighting, what we're really trying to extract out of that race. So we can see after that first lap incident and the safety car, Lewis appears to be leading the race. But what happened to Valtteri? Because he lost a place uh, to the Renault there and different tyres. Different tyres, but also not the best start in the world. So he, he came off the line, he had a reasonably poor start. Actually, on this particular occasion, it may have just saved him. Because if he'd been a slightly better start, he would have been caught up with that accident that happened in front of him, as Alonso was. He dropped back as a result of that. Also, these cars, these other cars, Hulkenberg, Perez, and Palmer, are all on that x tyre that you can see, a blue tyre. And that, again, would just help them off the line. It's not going to help them after two or three laps, but just off the line may have provided them a bit more grip. We've then got another safety car period here, and the order completely reshuffles. We can see the two Williams making it into the top 10. Um, at this point, you chose not to pit, whereas Daniel Ricciardo did. Why did you stay out? In the situation where you're the lead car, you actually have a worse position than the car just behind you, because they can always make a decision of what you do. Had we stopped at that point in time, I'm confident Daniel Ricciardo would have stayed out and would have taken the lead of the race. He stopped into cars that were on exit tyres, and at this point in the race, it was very clear that the Inter was working very well, and the Exwet just wouldn't be the right tyre going forward. So all of the Exwet runners, Hulkenberg, Perez, certainly around us, and Palmer, came in. They may not have come in straight away, in fact, Hulkenberg waited for the second lap of the safety car, but that gave a free air gap for Daniel Ricciardo to box into. We didn't have that available. Had we boxed, Daniel would have been in the lead in the race. And now your choice is, do you want to be in the lead of the race on slightly used tyres? Or do you want to be P2 on a fresh set of inters against Daniel Ricciardo in front of you? And it's an easy decision. Track position is key in Singapore. Not just that, but there's actually a slightly second benefit to not stopping. The way the intermediate works is it slowly runs down the rubber on the tyre and as the track dries up it actually becomes a slick tyre. When you take a new one again you lose that benefit so as long as you've been wearing it down in the right way and Lewis did a great job at that, it can work much much better. A little bit after that second safety car uh, people started changing onto the dry tyres. Uh, talk us through what was going on at that point. So around lap 25 Magnussen was the first car to come in and trake uh, a set of ultra soft tyres. Now from this point to the end of the race we all had confidence that the ultra soft would make it. They're used in our case but it doesn't matter where the track is right now, you just want the softest compound available to make sure that you, you don't hit the wall. It's Singapore. It's difficult. Magnussen came in and he wasn't fast initially. First lap out actually a little bit slow, but then as the tyres warmed up, it became obvious that it was transitioning across into dry tyres. We were in a privileged situation. We were very fast on that inter and Lewis did a great job. He was just able to build enough of a gap to Ricciardo to ensure that we could just wait a little bit longer than everyone else, decrease the risk, ensure that we didn't hit the wall on the way back out again, and we didn't have to commit early. So we waited for Ricciardo's box first. He took the ultra soft tires. We followed suit one lap later. With Valtteri, you can see we actually stopped in the same lap as Ricciardo. There's a cars behind, including Sainz, that stopped just before Sainz here onto that super soft. In fact, the only car really in that top 10 to take the super soft holding the car on the grid. Um, and as a result of that, we were reacting with him, with Valtteri, one lap later. It was difficult conditions. Both drivers came on and said that that was very, very tough and just on the borderline, but it was the right lap. The third safety car bunched the cars up a lot. Was that a huge threat for you because of the Red Bulls being so fast? And also we saw on lap 44, Lewis losing a lot of time. Two things, yeah, Red Bull were absolutely dominant on Friday. They were extremely quick on the long runs and we knew they were going to be an absolute threat in the race in normal conditions. 
Here on that lap, particularly with Lewis, what happened is at the restart, he had a great restart, got the tyres up to temperature and just pulled away. What I was concerned about is just making too much of a gap of the field for Ricciardo to then drop in behind and have another free stop effectively, either under a safety car or otherwise, which is really what happened around this point here on the Inters. And we can control it. Lewis doesn't need to go away. It's Singapore. It's very difficult to overtake. He just needs to manage the gap. And that's what happened. Lewis initially took off very, very fast. We controlled his pace back down again. And we just tried to control the pace towards the end of the race, just to make sure that if we ended up in a poor situation with Ricciardo, we had the tyres available and Daniel never had the gap behind to drop into. So it's all part of the plan. Indeed it was. Let's look at the end result then. The top 10, a variety of colours there, different teams, different manufacturers. That's great to see, isn't it? Fantastic to see. And this was a great race. A number of times during the race, each of the teams could have benefited a loss. Start time. If you went into, that was a winning decision. It gave you a few places. So Carlos Sainz really benefited from that. You can see back here in that P4 slot. You can also see that the Force India is doing really, really well. They did start in the x wets but they got the right decision. They got rid of it at the safety car and again had the right transfer across onto dry tyres. So this region here around that 25, that was a key decision, start tyre key decision. And that's what's great about Singapore. It just presents a lot of opportunity to maximise your points. Keeps you busy as well, James. Uh, let's talk about the weather. Obviously we had rain. Uh, the temperatures playing into uh, your strategy as well? That they do, because what's interesting about this is I think perhaps there's a consideration the track would have been much cooler. It wasn't. Actually 31 degrees on the track temperature is around about where we were on Friday in P2. When the sun goes down, you just end up at around about ambient. The track in the race wasn't too dissimilar for the moment of the weekend, which is quite an interesting point. And finally, let's talk about pit lane times because we know that the Red Bulls are fast in Singapore. How important was it that Lewis and the pit crew uh, were at the top of their game this weekend? And as they were, you can see that. It, it's always important. I mean, the reality on this one is they had a little bit more margin to spare, but the reality behind it is you can't ask a pit crew to become half a second slower. What happens is they start getting the coordination wrong. They're performing at the best that they can perform all the time consistently. And they did us proud again. Fantastic stuff. Great result for the team. That one-two in Singapore, though, is still elusive. Afraid so. <laughs> we move now to Malaysia. Thanks, James. Thank you.